I'm Dr. Hal Schwartzstein. I'm a pediatric ophthalmologist at Northwell and assistant professor of ophthalmology and pediatrics at the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine, Hofstra Northwell. Today, I would like to talk to you about children's eye health and safety. To do so, we will go over the anatomy of the eye, some definitions, the top 10 questions patients ask me uh, in the office, and some holiday safety tips. We'll start off with a children's joke. <laughs> Why did the cookie go to the doctor? Because he was feeling crummy. So here's some anatomy of the eye. Uh, you can see the, uh, starting from the front, you can see the cornea is the clear part of the eye. The iris is the part of your eye with color to it. The lens is behind that. The pupil is the uh, dark spot in the center. Uh, the sclera is the white part of the eye. Overlying that is the conjunctiva. And uh, the back of the eye has the retina. There's the optic nerve, which connects to the brain. The optic disc is the part of the nerve that is visible when you look inside the eye. Uh, and the vitreous is the gel that fills the eye. This is what you typically see. Again, the clear part here is the cornea. This is the pupil. This is the iris. And the white part of the eye is the sclera. Uh, overlying the sclera is the conjunctiva. That's clear. And of course, your eyelids. There's some eye muscles that connect to the eye and control the movements. Uh, you have to look a little deeper to see these. Uh, there's a superior rectus, medial rectus, inferior rectus, and lateral rectus. These control movements in the corresponding directions, up, down, left, and right. And there's the oblique muscles here and here, and those rotate the eyes. And this is what it looks like as the muscles travel back behind your eye. This is a photo of the back of the eye when you look inside. Here's the optic nerve, connects to the brain. This, all of this is the retina. And then in the center is uh, where you see the most detail. Uh, that's called the fovea. Some definitions for words that'll come up in the presentation. Uh, there's myopia, which is nearsightedness. This happens when the eyeball is too long. Patients can see up close, but not at distance. Hyperopia is farsightedness. This is when the eyeball is too short. Patients can see, but a focusing effort is required. Most children are farsighted and do not need glasses unless they have amblyopia or eye misalignment, which is called strabismus. Astigmatism is when the eye is shaped like an oval instead of round, like this football on the side. And a cataract that you may have heard about is when there's an opacity of the lens. A few other definitions. There's amblyopia. This is when there's decreased vision in an eye that occurs in the first nine years of life. This can be due to need for glasses, eye misalignment, uh, or an opacity of the eye. Uh, strabismus is an abnormal alignment of the eye. Esotropy is when the eye turns in, like this picture here, or an exotropy when the eye turns out, like this picture here. So here are my top 10 patient questions. Question number 10, is there a treatment for color blindness? No, but you may have seen color blindness glasses. They can help you pass the test, but they do not allow you to see, to see the part of the color spectrum or visible spectrum that is missing. The glasses contain a filter that shifts the spectrum of life you can see. You can see red, green and red because they are shifted along the color spectrum but there are other colors that you could previously see which are no longer visible. So it's kind of playing a game. There is currently no substitute for the missing protein in people with red green color blindness. Uh, the main limitation with this, this disorder is complex patterns that involve red and green. The Ishihara color test was developed during World War I by a Japanese doctor to identify people who would not be able to see camouflage soldiers. At one point, the US Army found that colorblind people could actually more easily spot uh, camouflage. Uh, their eyes weren't tricked by this. Uh, further research in England supports this as well. <clears throat> Most affected individuals can still see solid red and solid green, such as traffic lights. Interior design and fashion can be challenging though. Question nine, 
Does vision therapy treat learning disabilities, eye misalignment, or strabismus, or the need for glasses? No. There is no high quality research that shows a benefit for vision therapy to treat learning disabilities, eye misalignment, which is also called strabismus, or the need for glasses. There is even a statement against it by the American Academy of Ophthalmology and the American Academy of Pediatrics, um, the web websites listed there. There are exercises or strategies and aids used by occupational therapists to help children follow a line of text without skipping words or lines. This is different from vision therapy. There are eye exercises for a condition called convergence insufficiency, but you do not need to get vision therapy to do these exercises and these would be recommended to you by your eye doctor, if needed. Question eight, does my child need an eye exam every year? No. The Tennessee experience in 2003 was documented by Dr. Donahue. Tennessee mandated an eye exam by an eye care professional prior to entrance into kindergarten. Dr. Donahue's group received the results of thousands of results filed with the state. They found that 44% of children received glasses unnecessarily and were told to come for follow-up visits, uh, which were also unnecessary. The costs imposed on families and society was astronomical. Insurance companies do not cover routine eye exams in children. Healthy children without a family history of eye problems do not need an eye exam by a pediatric ophthalmologist. Pediatricians in schools perform routine vision screenings. If a, vision, excuse me, if a child fails a vision screening, then they require a comprehensive eye exam by a pediatric ophthalmologist. If a child has a specific complaint, such as a red eye, discharge, tearing, swelling, blurry vision, drifting of an eye, et cetera, then a comprehensive eye exam by a pediatric ophthalmologist is needed. Routine comprehensive eye exams by an ophthalmologist start at 40 years of age, with some exceptions. Question seven, how can I stop my child's nearsightedness or myopia from getting worse? Part of it is genetic and we can't control that. However, there are two factors that we can control. You can spend more time outside, at least one hour per day. Sunlight has been shown to slow down or decrease the progression of nearsightedness. You can also decrease your near work. Holding devices and books at arm's length uh, has been shown to stop the progression of nearsightedness. You don't have to keep your arms completely straight, but a little bend at the elbow uh, makes it more comfortable. Uh, astigmatism is genetic and is not affected by other factors, so that's different from nearsightedness. Refractive surgery, such as LASIK, is an option when the child is 21 years old and the eye is no longer changing. Question six. I heard there are other options to treat nearsightedness. Do they work? Yes, no, and yes, but not safely. Uh, the yes is that there are eye drops that, to control nearsightedness that have been studied since 2006, with most studies being performed after 2012. These studies were performed in Singapore and China. The eye drops consist of low-dose atropine. This is a new regimen for an old medication. Atropine has been around for at least 30 years. Uh, the eye drops, excuse me, the drops you probably more than 45 years or more. The drops are used in each eye before bed. The drops have been shown to stop or reduce the progression of nearsightedness or myopia by at least 50%. So the next few options do not work. Uh, prescribing a lower glasses strength than what is needed has not been shown to stop the progression of nearsightedness. Uh, it does also result, though, in buy patients buying glasses more frequently. So it's got several things against it. Uh, bifocals have been looked at, but bifocals do not slow the progression of nearsightedness. Progressive lenses are like bifocals without a line, and these do not significantly slow the progression of nearsightedness either. So here's an option that works, but not safely. Uh, you can wear contact lenses when you sleep, and they've been shown to stop the progression or reduce the progression of nearsightedness. This is called orthokeratology, or ortho-K for short. The progression can be reduced by about 40%. However, sleeping with contact lenses increases your risk of a blinding eye infection. There are more than 100 documented cases uh, in the literature 
And I'm sure there's cases that aren't documented because once it's documented, it's kind of old news. Question five, where can I find accurate information about children's eye health and safety? The American Association for Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus is a great resource. Their website is www.aapos.org. And the American Academy of Ophthalmology is a great resource. Uh, their website is www.aao.org. Question four, when can my child start contact lenses? Uh, this is up to the parents. Uh, depends on how responsible the child is. If, they take, if the child takes good care of their glasses, it's a good sign. So no scratches, they're not losing them frequently. Uh, they have the same pair for one, two years and they take good care of them. That's a great sign that they can be responsible with contact lenses. The reason that this is concerning is that there is a risk of vision loss if the child sleeps with the contact lenses in their eyes or if they do not clean them each night. You can get around not cleaning them each night with disposable contact lenses but you need to throw out the contact lens each day or after each day is complete. Uh, but if you don't want me to avoid the question. <laughs> the average age that people get contact lens or children start contact lenses is 14 years of age. Um, I do use special contact lenses in babies who undergo contact, uh, cataract surgery. So uh, you can use them you know, at very young ages. Uh, and I've had a few patients use regular contact lenses at ages as young as nine years. Uh, however, there was very close supervision by their parents and the parents just used the contact lenses for cheerleading or dance competitions and then took them out right after. Question three, do I need glasses that block blue light? Now, blue light can cause cell damage. So the studies do show that. Uh, but these studies were done in uh, cells that are not found in the eyes. Uh, we have pigment in our eyes that protect, protect against blue light. The sun emits more blue light than our devices do, and the sky is blue. Um, however, blue light is important because uh, screen time uh, can have an effect on children. Uh, blue light can disrupt your sleep cycle and make it harder to fall asleep. As a result, you should try to limit screen time or filter blue light before bed. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends limiting screen time also to avoid childhood obesity and the onset of attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. Question two, uh, what is lazy eye or amblyopia? Amblyopia is the medical name for lazy eye. Technically, lazy eye is not an eye that wanders, drips, or crosses. It is also not a droopy eyelid. A lazy eye or an amblyopic eye often looks perfectly normal. This is the big problem that we as pediatric ophthalmologists uh, are looking for with vision screenings uh, through the help of pediatricians and other, other, eye, uh, other health professionals. It is the sing single largest cause more than all other causes combined of vision loss in one eye for children in North America. Amblyopia or lazy eye is when something prevents normal development of vision in the affected eye and sometimes both eyes. It can be caused by high astigmatism, high nearsightedness, high farsightedness, cataracts, a droopy eyelid, or an eye, eye misalignment, among other things. The failed vision screen is a very important red flag. Please see your eye doctor within six months of testing. And question one, to go over what we said in question five, where can I find accurate information about children's eye health and safety? You can go to the American Academy of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus at their website, www.aapos.org, or the American Academy of Ophthalmology at www.aao.org. We'd like to also cover holidays and eye safety with you. Uh, two holidays in particular are very important when it comes to the eyes. Fourth of July is number one, fireworks are dangerous. In 2019, there were 12 deaths and 10,000 injuries related to fireworks. <clears throat> you know, 
people think sparklers are not a big deal, but you should not allow children to handle fireworks, even sparklers. They burn at very high temperatures and are not truly safe. Aerial fireworks are banned for consumer use in New York, so those really shouldn't be, be an issue in New York, but people do obtain them. Uh, older children may be permitted to use fireworks, but only under close adult supervision. Halloween is the next holiday and the holiday that's coming up uh, where eye health is important. You should never buy decorative contact lenses or cosmetic contact lenses without a prescription. Every year at Halloween, there is an increase in the use of decorative co uh, contact lenses to enhance costumes. But contact lenses sold without a prescription are illegal and dangerous. If contact lenses are not properly fitted, they can cause scratches of the front of your eye or corneal abrasions or loss of vision due to infection. So please be careful. That brings us to our conclusion. Again, I'm Dr. Schwartzstein, and I hope you've enjoyed the presentation and found it informative. I encourage you to discuss the, the information presented here further with your eye doctor. I also encourage you to read more about the topics presented. Another children's joke before I go, uh, why did the teacher have crossed eyes? Because she couldn't control her pupils. Okay, thanks for, thanks for watching.